Hey Saints, what's going on? This is Brian Love as a name YouTube channel and welcome. We are going to go through a prophetic word that was given to Nate Johnston, a powerful prophetic voice in our time. And I am looking right now from his website. So I want to make sure that you know that you can go down below and you can read his words as well as his wife's words that they received from the Lord at any time. Please do support them, follow them, so into their ministries as the Holy Spirit leads you. All right. Now, <clears throat> you may hear some uh, bird seagulls. It's only because I have some ambiance in the back just to kind of drown out the uh, houses from the, the, the noises from the house, which at times happens. All right. So don't let that freak you out. All right. No birds are, are flying around <laughs> here. The prophetic word we're going to get into today is entitled this. I prophesy a week of rapid movement. Now, on the website here, there is not a particular or a specific date when this was submitted. Usually I'll go to Instagram and see if uh, this brother in Christ has uploaded this to Instagram to see what the date is because it just kind of fills that in for you. But you know what? Because the Holy Spirit is Holy Spirit and there is no time in the spiritual realm. We can receive this word no matter when you're listening to it. And it can be applicable. Holy Spirit will nonetheless touch you, bless you, encourage you, fill you, realign you, renew your mind as long as you were open. Okay. Now, from what I could gauge, this is a very fresh word. So let's just take it as a now word for ourselves and let's just open our hearts. All right. Let's come before the Lord so we can jump right in. Lord God. Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, thank you for the word we're about to receive. Thank you that we are constantly on your mind. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us, surround us, come forth from within us, for you dwell in this temple. You dwell in these temples of your people. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. And we ask that you be glorified and honored in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, saints, today is July 23rd, 2024. We are going to go through a wonderful word here. Again, it's called, I prophesy a week of rapid movement. It begins like this. Nate says, over the weekend, I was praying into this week and I felt the Lord instructing me to get a pen and write down what he wanted to say. And then there's a subheader here. Moving, shaking, shifting, and defining. This is an hour of rapid movement, I heard the Lord say. Then I saw a vision of a miner panning for gold, shaking the pan, adding water, and shaking it again. Ooh, Holy Spirit, thank you. God says this has been a time of refining and purifying, also of shaking and of moving, as well as shifting and defining. But now this is where the gold is revealed. I heard the Lord say this. Now the word movement used in the Bible in Greek is the word I'm going to try to pronounce this, guys. Kineo, K-I-N-E-O, or maybe it's Kineo. Let's go with that, Kineo. <laughs> this is where we get the word kinetic. This means advancement, but also means removal. At the same time as God is advancing you, he is actually freeing you. <laughs> but what the Lord said was rapid movement. We have been in a season of movement, but this is the part where things happen suddenly. Awesome. Saints, let's just pause for a second. Let's type in the comments. Make it personal. Type, God is advancing me. And maybe someone else wants to add another decree and type in, God is freeing me right now. Amen. So the Lord is talking about rapid movement. 
Now, let's go to the next to the scripture that follows here. First Corinthians, or rather in Corinthians, didn't say first or second, <coughs> in Corinthians 15, 52. I believe that is first Corinthians, yes. It says it will happen in an instant, in the twinkling of his eye. The word instant here in the Greek is the word rhine. That's R-H-I-N-E, which means a rapid change of position or posture. But it also means to cast off, to throw away. Hmm. You are in your ripe season where God is suddenly moving you into place and casting off every obstacle that has weighed you down. Many have endured the changing season, the shifting and shaking, purifying and defining, but the gold is coming to the surface. And look, there is freedom coming with it. Look behind you. God has been clearing up. Oh, thank you, Lord. God has been clearing up the messes of the past and preparing you for what's ahead. Next up header, the walls are coming down. Mm, maybe somebody, somebody wants to type that in the comments. Maybe you want to speak that over yourself. The walls are coming down. The Lord says, or rather the prophetic word says this, they then heard the Lord say, Jericho, your walls are coming down. We all know this fortified city was an obstacle to God's people, and he asked them to do something strange. March around the city six times and blow their shofars in worship. As we know, it worked. The walls came down. Now, just to be clear, though Israel marched around the city of Jericho for six days straight, once a day, that is, not straight, <laughs> once a day for six days, on the seventh day, they were instructed to march around the city seven times. That is when the priests blew their horns and the people shouted on that seventh day and the walls came crashing down. All right, let's go. Let's continue. I felt the Lord say, Jericho for more than Jericho was more than just a great analogy. And so Nate looked up the meaning. What does Jericho mean? Well, it was a pagan city for one, with etymological roots. That's quite a word there. In mysticism. But the word carries three interesting meanings. Number one, travel and pathway in a wide open space, unrestricted and unconfined. Number two, wind and spirit, slash, a fragrance. Number three, month or unit of time. I believe this is a Cairo season where God is removing all obstacles that have been in our way, leading us by his spirit to a wide open space where we can fully step into all he has placed in our hearts. There has been a fragrance that has come off your life ooh, in this season that has been a that has been as worship to God as you have continued to circle around your obstacle in worship day after day, thanking him and not giving up. Oh, yes, Lord, thank you. And now, God says, the walls are going to come down. Whoa. Okay, we got another subheader and I want to continue, but I can't until I remind you and point this out to you and highlight it to you. Notice what Nate is speaking by the Spirit. As you are going through the obstacle, right here it's symbolic of going around the walls or a mountain or dealing with the mountain, whatever it is you're dealing with. Notice what he's saying by the Spirit, which I absolutely have repeated many, many times here. From my own experience, I share it so you can benefit that we abide and stay in worship and thanksgiving. This gives you the strength to continue. It helps keep your focus on the Lord, <laughs> not on your circumstances, not on the trials or the troubles or the tribulations, not on the challenges, but on the Lord. As you put your focus on the Lord, your focus goes to His 
omnipotent ability and omnipotent power and um, omnipresence and his omniscient nature reminding yourself is there anything too difficult for the Lord and that's a rhetorical question the answer is no as we focus on him where your focus goes energy flows because you focus on him you create a you could say almost like a tunnel you come you create a connection spiritually to God and your faith grows and you give him access your faith goes unto the Lord your focus goes unto the Lord and you draw strength you draw hope encouragement joy which is your strength according to the book of Nehemiah okay let's continue next up header glory revealed through trials I heard the Lord say I have been moved by the prayers of my people I have heard their cries and prayers in this season <coughs> and now this is where things will begin to pick up speed and move into place suddenly and your trials and suffering will turn into glorious exhibitions of my goodness over your life I am going to celebrate you <laughs> whoa and lavish you with my favor oh my that's probably the most beautiful statement I've read so far in this word we've got to write this down Saints make it personal write this God is going to celebrate me and lavish me with his favor <laughs> some of you would do good to even write that down for yourself on a piece of paper and read it to yourself not only is the Lord going to celebrate you as the prophetic word is saying I'll give you a secret in reality every moment every breath the Lord is celebrating you you my friend my brother my sister you are his greatest masterpiece as, as they would say in the world he broke the mold when he created you yes that is how special you are to the living God unique so unique that he gave you a specific thumbprint a specific uh, DNA sequence that no one else has because you are you were and you are that special to him so by saying to yourself God you celebrate me and you lavish me in your favor you build up your self in the Lord and you speak life over yourself by speaking such things that are in alignment with his scriptures his word with his nature, his character, his ways. And of course, the devil doesn't want you doing it. So that's just a plus, a more reason for you to do it, right? So right after this, Nate says, then the Lord led me to this scripture. Romans 8, Romans 8, verse 18 to 19. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us for creation the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed mm. I, I love it when it says in other translations for the manifestation of the sons of God now when the Lord refers to his sons he's not talking about male or female the Lord is speaking spiritually just like Jesus said his words are spirit and they are life <laughs> if uh, if the carnal and baby Christians could only get that and really believe that and really receive that because the Lord spoke that then they wouldn't have an issue with so many other things they wouldn't be thinking in their flesh and in their carnality and so forth let's continue right now the glory of God is beginning to be unveiled in your life where you have felt flattened by circumstances and obstacles designed to assassinate your hope and calling. God has been using it to fuel your 
glorious reveal. Subheader, don't fight the sudden flight. Let me pause here. Saints, if you're enjoying this, please hit the like. If you're not subscribed just yet, subscribe, please. And let's continue. Lastly, Nate says, I had two visions, one of a door and the other of an airport. I saw a scene play out, a scene in an airport with people rushing to their, to their different gates, embarking on new adventures. There was something exciting and unexpected about it. In the second vision, I saw a hand reaching out and resting on a door handle, but then I hesitated to open the door. In the days to come, God is going to suddenly launch you into adventures you didn't expect. <laughs> Put a fresh anointing on you. Oh, let me just pause here. Lord, I just want to bless the people right now. I feel you leading me to do this. Lord, place and pour out a fresh anointing on your people now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right, let's continue. The Lord will cause you to function in ways you haven't before. Whoa, let me pause here. I got to say, last week, uh, the middle of July, I haven't told anyone this, my, except my wife. <laughs> I tell her practically everything that the Lord shows me, except some things that the Lord will tell me to just keep it to myself for now and whatnot. But you all are hearing it first. Last week, I began to, to um, experience the Lord in a different way. In a different way regarding the anointing. Or at least one of the anointings on my life. Of course, I keep that to myself. Uh, because nothing I have or can do is without God anyway. Everything, Every good and perfect gift comes from Him. I love how this uh, a man of God said said this i believe it was <clears throat> prophet tomi arayomi who says this he says by the spirit of god god says you cannot impress me with the gifts i've given you <laughs> that when i heard that oh man i was like oh i love that lord i love that oh that people the people of god especially those who are very gifted but perhaps don't have the character of christ built up in them greater than that gifting if only they would truly, truly remember this. Amen. Now, anyway, let's keep going. But the Lord just said he will cause us to function in ways we haven't before. Thank you, Lord. I've begun to, to experience that. I pray your wonderful people experience that. The Lord says all dreams will be picked up. New ones will be given. But in all the excitement, some will hesitate in fear and may fear the suddenly. Can this really be God? This Seems too good to be true. The Holy Spirit is ministering to hearts right now as things begin to pick up because so many have become stuck in the mindset of being grounded for a long time without seeing any movement. Fresh hope is coming to break the sorrow and pain of hope deferred and cause hearts to dream again with the Lord. Wow. Two more subheader saints. The next one says, live again dream again those who have lost their vision in the process god is going to excuse me those who have lost their vision in the process god is going to give you new vision uncluttered vision this will be a season of jeremiah 29 verse 11 which says for i know the plans i have for you says declares the lord not just says, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Saints, let me pause. That scripture alone will knock, knock out a whole bunch of doom and gloom lies from religion, from churches with the wrong mindset. That alone, if you would just choose to believe what God is saying here. He has plans for you. So if he has plans for you, you obviously matter, don't you? There should be no victim mentality. There should be no poor me and all this happens to me and nobody loves me and this and that. 
knock it off. First of all, don't give a voice to the lies of the devil. Just because he's whispering in your ear or because the thoughts are coming up in you doesn't mean it's true. No. You must learn to discern by knowing the ways of God. And you know it by reading the scriptures by praying in the spirit by praying the scriptures by declaring the scriptures aloud and over yourself and then when you hear and feel and have things come at you you will know if it's in alignment with the word of god the scriptures the holy bible and if it's not you do exactly what it says in Corinthians. I believe it's Second Corinthians, right? <clears throat> 10, verse 5. Casting down all imagination, all vain imagination, every thought, taking captive of every thought that raises itself against the knowledge of Christ. The knowledge of Christ, the Scriptures. Okay? It's not limited to the Scriptures. The Scriptures is enough for foundation, for righteousness, righteous living, and for salvation but it is not the fullness of God. It is simply enough, okay? So don't be leery of statements or wisdom that you may hear someone else and say, oh, well, that's not, a, that's not a scripture. If the truth in the statements and so forth don't come against the scriptures, then you don't have to worry about it, right? Don't be religious and rigid this way. So let's continue. Where you have been fixated on the past, you're, on your past, your limited present, God is downloading new dreams and plans and blueprints for your life that are going to ignite a fresh passion for the future ahead of you. I heard the Lord say this, live future tense. Ooh, let's put that in the comments. The Lord says, live future tense tense when you have been through any wilderness you stop seeing the future and you stop dreaming and god is restoring both right now okay we have one more one more subheader but we have to understand what the lord just said about living future tense many times we get sucked up into what's happening in the present especially if they are trials and temptation and tribulations and challenges and burdens etc if you focus too much on the present then you are in a sense becoming a slave to the things around you when in reality your true reality your source of power and peace and joy and love is in christ so no matter what's happening around you your focus is to be on Christ. Just like you've heard many times, Peter stepped out of the boat. Though he was surrounded by waves and the wind, his focus was on Christ. And he had no issues mounting up above the problems and not being blown away. There was no issue until his focus shifted off of Jesus. And all of a sudden, the focus was on the present circumstances rather than on the eternal Jesus but now Jesus is not only in front of us leading us as long as we're willing to be led he is right here within us he is in us and we are in him and so the Lord wants us to not dwell on the negative things that are happening now especially and so much more are we not not to dwell on the things of the past because when you dwell on the things of the past you're allowing your emotions to keep you connected to past situations traumatic experiences and that literally means in the spiritual realm your soul is bound bound in a bad way bound to the past which means you cannot go forward if you are if your emotions are too carnally or maybe you're not strong in the in emotions in terms of your soul in terms of uh, renewed emotions 
unto Christ and they're not yielded to the Spirit, <clears throat> then what's happening around you, you're overtaken by it, then your emotions will tie you, they will bind you to the present circumstances, which result in the same thing. It keeps you from moving forward. But if you remember, Lord, I thank you for leading me in this, in this mini teaching. This is powerful stuff, saints. I hope you're getting it. If you will remember the scripture we just read a few sentences ago, Jeremiah 29, <coughs> 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. So if you're reading this and you take it in and it becomes your manna, it becomes your nourishment, it becomes your food, then no matter what you're going through in the present, the past, it doesn't matter anymore because you're not there, okay? Don't tie yourself to the past through emotions and through your thoughts. Oh, I should have done this. Oh, you know, poor me this. Oh, this wouldn't have happened. Knock it off. Stop it. You're being... You're, you're imprisoning yourself in a prison when the doors are wide open and you can literally walk out any time. But you choose to be there through your emotions and through your thoughts dwelling on the past. Okay? Same thing with the present. The Lord is telling us, look forward to the future. He's telling us in this prophetic word <coughs> to know that He wants you to dream. And I'm not talking about laying down and having dreams. It has its place and it's wonderful and it's powerful. The Lord is talking about having hope for the future, knowing that he's not only with you, but that he has good things ahead of you. And he wants you to expect that. He wants you to look and envision him ahead of you, leading you. <coughs> because in reality, Jesus already planned his perfect will for your life. Psalm 119. No, Psalm 139. Thank you, Lord. Verse 19. Verse 16, somewhere around there. <laughs> Kevin Zedai quotes this a lot, and I haven't quoted it in a while. But it says that the Lord wrote a book for us even before one of those days was lived by us. Okay, now I'm paraphrasing, which means that before you were sent to the earth from the Lord, because we all resided in Him, in Him we live, we move, we have our being. <coughs> before you were sent to the earth, the Lord had written out a book for you, his perfect plan for your life. That does not mean that the Lord planned whether you would, you know, do good and bad, and then he forces you to do it. No, you're not a clone. You're not a robot. You're not an android. You have free will. He wrote a book with his perfect will for you, and the angels of God assigned to you. <coughs> Everybody has angels, at least two. They help you um, protecting you, shielding you, helping you get into godly cycles, okay, the demonic, try to get you into demonic cycles, you know, such as drugs, criticism, it could be any, any type of sin to where you seem like you're always doing that. Those are cycles, okay? The angels of God, are, the Lord, originated uh, everything. And so there are godly cycles. He tries to get you. That could be you're very, very disciplined and organized and respectful and, you know, you're really good at getting up early and you just have this type of nature and whatnot. And so the Lord wants you to know that he's already prepared the way. So he's gone into your future. He's carved out your destiny. And by you seeking him and saying, Lord, what do you want from, from my life, Lord? What do you want me to do? Where do you want me to work, Lord? Who do you have for me as a mate? What is your will for me? As you seek him, that connects you to him. And the Lord begins to reveal it, as long as you have faith. And he's carved out the path for you. So he's standing right there in your future. And he's just looking at you with the path carved out already. And he's just saying, come, follow me. And so this is why he wants to focus ahead. Have hope. There's nothing wrong if you would like to have a lovely home. Nothing wrong with that. Maybe you like cars. Nothing wrong with that. The point is, put nothing of this world above Jesus. Okay? The world will, will tell you things. Even the church, they're afraid of people being prosperous. The Lord literally just said, He has plans to prosper us. 
What about that does the church, do the religious folks not understand? Perhaps it's because they are untrustworthy. <laughs> then they're trying to project that onto everyone else. Money is not evil. It is the love of money that is evil. Because it becomes an idol. Love nothing more than Jesus. Okay? It's not, it's not hard. This is good, Lord. This is so good. Thank you. Okay. Let's go to the last part. I did not expect to, to, to speak all that, saints. But I tell you, I believe that some of you are, are taking hold of this. And it's opening up revelation to you. And this will change your life. Because when I learned this, this type of revelation from the Lord, it did set me free in many ways. And many times deliverance um, doesn't just mean, from you know, demonic spirits. It could literally be peeling back an onion of a wrong mindset and so forth. So let the Lord free you through revelation knowledge that he's sharing with you. Okay. Oh, Holy Spirit, thank you. You're so good. You're so good. All right. Last subheader. The unlocking anointing. The last thing God spoke to me was about an unusual anointing coming upon those who have been in the waiting season. It's an anointing to unlock people and places into freedom. The very breakthrough of movement you will experience will commission you into a lifestyle of kingdom exploits, unlocking those who are bound. <coughs> oh, saints, let me pause here for a second. You know, been fine all day, and I get on here to share a prophetic word, and apparently there's something so powerful about this word <coughs> that I have to keep pausing the video because the enemy is trying to obstruct my speaking and so forth. So, one, I apologize to you about that, but please understand, all right? <laughs> not sick, don't have allergies, and I wouldn't speak that over myself anyway because I know better. But I'm just letting you know, all right? Take this powerful word. Realize the potency of the Holy Spirit in this. The very fact that the enemy is trying to hinder me speaking it to you proves it, all right? Nate says, as I write this, I see what this anointing will do and is also doing in your life right now. I see contracts being unlocked that have been in limbo of red tape. These are destiny contracts, houses, buildings, settlements, as well as inheritances. I see paperwork being torn up, representing bondage to failures, debts, and issues that have caused you to be tied down to people and places out of God's grace and design. I see destinies being awoken that have been in slumber. Things that didn't connect or have been hidden are being revealed. And movements will suddenly be birthed. Isaiah 45, 1 through 3. This specific anointing, Nate says this, Doors that have been closed will open. This is the Isaiah 45, verses 1 through 3, anointing. Ooh, Lord, I receive that in Jesus' name. Feel free, saints, if you want to type, I receive, just type, I receive it. Okay? It's before the Lord that you're doing this. Nate says, I pray and release this anointing over your life right now. Rapid movement is coming to you right now. Your feet are moving. And your waiting is about to be your glorious unveiling in Jesus' name. Oh, and Lord, as I lift my hands, I can feel them heat up. I release your anointing, Father, on your people. Lord, I release your beautiful presence on your people. And Lord, I release the glory upon your people. In the mighty name of Jesus. And we give you the glory, Lord. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Saints, I pray this blessed you. Let me know in the comments. Please go ahead and like the video. Please subscribe if you're not subscribed. 
and I'll see you very soon in the next video. All right, God bless you.